This next little piece is going to be on using uh, uh, effect transitions. Now, right off the bat, let me tell you that the transitions that come with Avid are not great at all, at least in my estimate. The idea is this, that, you know, more advanced effects are bought as separate packages called plugins, and they are bought, and then they're installed, and they're very cool, but it's an outside expense. But there's a couple of things we can do. The simplest of the transitions available is actually not in the effect workspace, but here with the quick transition icon that we've used before to kind of fade things in and out. So if we have two shots next to each other and we want to dissolve between the two, blend the two, you sit on the uh, edit point, uh, select the tracks that you want to do that to. And, and remember, you don't have to always dissolve audio and video. Sometimes you don't want to do that because the audio might get messy. You may want to have it cut or dissolve it at a different point. You can just deselect uh, the audio tracks if you want and make it a video dissolve and vice versa. But for now, we'll just do everything together. So you sit on the point between the two edits and you go to the quick transition menu and take a look there and you know the default is add and dissolve there's a couple of other things we'll actually get into one of those in a moment and then the idea of centered on cut or the dissolve ending on cut which means so you can see here it will start on the one shot and then at that edit point that we have it will go fully to the other shot and that would be the same for starting on cut as well, it starts once we get to this end point, then continues to dissolve. But it needs a piece of that clip in order to, you know, overlap. But usually, uh, I find that centered on cut is the way to go. And actually, here you can see before you even do the dissolve, if you want to, you can modify it. Here you'll see the default is 30 frames or one second, meaning that. It will start 15 frames before the cut point and continue 15 frames after the cut point. But you could actually grab this and slide it one way or the other, uh, in effect, kind of customizing your either end at shot or begin at the cut. Uh, and you see that changes and it flips to a custom. But we're going to stay with the centered on cut just for now. And you want to add and render that. Again, it's creating a little piece of media, and that will be stored on your hard drive. So click, pretty quick, and there it gives that icon, that square icon on all three, audio and video, and there you can see it blends from one to the other. Now, right, take a look and you see these handles. That's something relatively new, where if you want to extend the uh, duration, instead of going back into, the normal way would be to sit on it and say, mm, I want it to be shorter. You'd have to open this up again and then type in a new value and then re-render it. In this case, you can kind of eyeball it, grab one of these uh, handles here at the end and either drag it closer and you'll see the, the main window kind of changes and it's showing you uh, the middle transition and how the one shot is changing on one side or the other. Uh, and then you can let go and then you'll see it's changed slightly. Let me pull it also from the other side. And there it's showing you the other shot. Now where you're moving it for it blends with that shot. And so I think now we've made it a much shorter dissolve than it was before. And again, I can do that and really stretch it out. Just want to see a, a big difference there. Let's take a look at that. And you see it's a much longer dissolve now. So there are obviously different ways to modify it, but that is uh, the simplest of effects and probably the most often used. And if 
You say, nah, I didn't like the dissolve, I'll leave it as a cut. Then again, you sit on it, have the proper track selected, and click the remove effect icon, and we're back to normal. Now, one thing I do want to point out is, you know, these clips have a um, finite amount of information. They don't go on forever. So, for instance, let's say I'm going to, I'm going to relay in this clip of the guy running with the dog. I can match frame it, right? We matched frame the clip and loaded it back. And let's say I want to take it from the very beginning. That's what I want. That was the perfect shot, right when they turn the camera on. And so I'm going to lay that in for a little bit. Duration doesn't really matter here. But so it's going to cover this. I'm going to overwrite that. Okay. And so here we have that shot now going into this shot, right? And we took it from the very beginning. Now, the problem with that, and this is kind of, I've mentioned this in several different scenarios. Let's go into the quick transition. And you'll notice it will not let me even do an ending at cut or centered at cut. Because that means I have to blend this on this side. And I can't because there is no media there. The best I can do is starting at cut. Even here, I can't drag it over because I can't go any further over. This is all there is. So in this scenario, I would have to do starting on cut or some variation of that. And it's not really that it changes the look of the effect. Okay, it just changes, you know, what you're able to do. Right now, I've had to take more of this shot and maybe, oh, look, there's some schmutz there in that shot on that side. Um, and so as this goes through here, that's got to be something over here. Let's just go frame by frame kind of quickly. Right, and it goes off to the guy's hands. So, you know, do we really want that? That means, well, we're going to have to, you know, change something, whether take this at a different point, take this at a different point. Not to confuse you, but you need to have media available to transition from one to the other. It's an overlap. This is an overlap, okay? So you have to have enough from each side in order to make the transition. If we look at the workspace here on your effects, you'll see, you know, we have that list of the, of the different categories. And up here, filters, that's what we've been doing, the, the blurring and image and stuff. Let's go over to transitions. Uh, they're also kind of in here as well, but transitions, because that's what we're doing, a transition effect. And there's really not many great ones. Uh, this one is okay. This dip to color, actually fade from color. And I use that to simulate kind of a flash, you know, a flash thing. If you put an effect with it, like a, it will be kind of cool. So let's see how that works. We're going to drag that. And transitions are not put on the clip, obviously. They're put in between two clips. So I have two clips here. Like So I put it down. You can see, highlights it, let it go. And now it's in between the two clips. So this one was called Fade from Color, meaning that it's going to start at a color, in this case black, and then fade to the image. as our little freaky dog. Okay? So I don't want it to be black. I want it to go from white, like a flash. So again, I'm sitting on here, click the effects, and now the little menu come up. This one's a pretty simple one, so it has background color, and so it's that black, I mean, it has nothing really, so I can make it a color, you know, saturation and all that, but I don't want that. I just want the luminance, I want the brightness. So there we go, just no hue, no sat, brightness. And so now it's from white. Now, to make that kind of flash more realistic, it really has to be kind of quick. This will be too long because it defaults at one second. And it kind of got hung up there. But I just want to show you as we sit on the thing. Now, you notice the menu kind of went away when I played it. So I have to click effect one more time. Then it comes back. Down here is where we see the duration of the effect. Okay? One minute. And by the way, this little icon 
shows you the alignments, like ending at cut, center at cut, starting at cut, and all that, okay? So kind of like the quick transition thing, basically the same idea. So I want to make this quicker, so I highlight this, and I'm going to only do it by, let's say, eight frames. Very short, less than a third. And I'm going to play that. And you see it's more like a flash, like a flash bulb. Pew! All right, now if you notice here on the timeline, there's a red line. That will happen when the machine is telling you that this is uh, something that I'm having a hard time replicating, and sometimes it won't even play, you won't see it. So that's something that has to be rendered. You wouldn't want to leave that there. So I can sit on it. The green dot tells me it's kind of okay. Red line says, ah, it's not that okay. So just to be safe, I'm going to render it, and I get the render icon, sit on it, make sure I have the track selected, not track two. Okay, the render icon, click render effect, and click OK, and there we go. And there's the red line gone, the green dot is gone, and there's the flash effect, put a little sound effect to that, and you're good. I hate that dog. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try some terrible effects. Let's see what this is, box wipe. And once you, you take it, you drop it on, it'll delete the other effect. And let's see what that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. That looks like something out of the 1960s. So most of these are pretty awful. One that I do like is uh, push. I find you can use that as well. So push, I click that category, and you'll see it has different areas. These top left, top right, those are, are kind of stupid as well. But the straight up and down or right to left, again, done kind of quickly, can be useful. I'm going to grab that, drop it there. You'll see that goes across. Again, it defaults to one second. But that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay, so that's those are kind of good. Left. Actually, that was left to right. Let's just mix it up. Right to left. It goes the other way. I, I kind of like those. Even um, top to bottom could be good, depending the piece you're doing. Obviously, something kind of lighthearted, maybe. All right, so I, I find that pretty good. The, uh, the, the flash from color. And most of these other things really... Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I really, uh, oh God, I don't even know what that is. So, you know, you can play around and do what you like, uh, but real, uh, you know, at the professional level, uh, the effects are bought in from companies like Boris or uh, Sapphire. They have amazing, beautiful effects, and unfortunately, we're not dealing with them. So just. That's, that's the idea, transition, and you put a transition in, and then I'm going to just get rid of that. That's so disgusting. Um, let's throw this in, which, you know, all right, if I wanted to adjust that, click effects one more time, and here we go. Uh, let's make a border, oh God. Uh, why would I want to do that? Okay, but that's it, the transitions. You take them, you put them in between two clips, and then you adjust as necessary. So if you feel the need to use these, that's fine. Uh, but, you know, the uh, quick transition here is usually enough. And so for the beginning situation we're in, I, I, I recommend the, the push and maybe a, a fade from color, a quick flash from color. But that's about it.